Hello everyone and welcome to Star Chasers episode 15, Bunch of Runaways. So, last time uh, there were a series of interviews. Um, uh, and we'll talk about the finalized new crew in a second, although you can see some of them are already present on the overlay. Um, let's see, who, who did they, who did they interview with? Um, Frostocles, uh, Stabby, Minerva, uh, James Jonathan, the space werewolf, man wolf. <laughs> I don't think I ever said his full name. Um, and then we did Tanky, Morpho, Kore, uh, Willow the Wisp, Viliana, and Hroffen. And then I did not get to do some of my dumber... Oh, Corner Briar Patch. And Was I did, there, yes. I did not get to do some of my dumb, even dumber NPCs who hopefully will show up later. Um... <laughs> So we did, we were running a little late, so we we decided to um, deliberate a little off stream. So, um, but perhaps we can sum it up for the the folks at home slash finish and finalize any adjustments that you all would like to make. Who would you all like to hire? Uh, Minerva, number one with a bullet. Well presented has attended a university, can navigate space lanes without daring us close to Squidman, just for the dare of it. Yeah, overall, thumbs up for the Minerves. Okay. Yes. I don't even care if we hire a second person. <laughs> uh... Who do we need? Yeah, uh, you know, I was just taken with the uh, the sort of simple bellicose uh, purity of the Eladrin mm -hmm. uh, over the uh, sort of rambling amiability of the Githyanki, uh, as far as the tanks are concerned. Yes. Offered to potential tanks at any rate. Yes. Plus, Tanky might have been an issue if we faced a red dragon, and he was all like, that's my friend. Well, or an asset, potentially. Or an asset, yeah. yes. It could be a, it... a huge bargaining chip in that respect, too. But, you know, if it came down to either one of those. Yes. Either or. Um, you know, hiring both, he seemed fine. Either or foe. Oh. <laughs> it's a real Depending shame. On the crew. I mean, we haven't seen the ship size. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, what, what was that tabaxi? Willow Wisp. Willow. Willow. Wisp. Yeah. <clears throat> Miss Willow I Wisp. must confess to a soft spot for Willow. Although I, I was impressed with Corey as well. So I, I don't know. Perhaps I'm not the right person to ask about making choices. Because uh, <laughs> I also, you know, what's. What's 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 uh, Knifey's sibling gonna do out here without a lift? <laughs> How'd they get out here? What Figure a coincidence! <laughs> they just they just sneak onto ships. I give it three episodes before he just shows up out of the kitchen. <laughs> I've always been here. <laughs> right, right. Has Some not sort of though. Come on. Filial genetic portal tendency. Yes. No. There's. We're gonna be swimming in knifey, stabby, cookie, basty. <laughs> basty. <laughs> You're going too fast. I can't write all these down. <laughs> Shanksy and Shivzy. Yes. I like Shanksy. That name is quite appealing. Uh, but yes, I believe we are up one bunny woman. Yes. Okay. Corey, I believe, is the, the choice of my two. The She's very tall, list. right? Yes, she's six foot already, and then she can activate a rune knight power to become a large sized creature. I remember, yeah. So, however big that makes her <laughs> from Someone's her already very big. tall Too big. stature. <laughs> Alvar doesn't like it. Yes. The only other sensibly sized one here. Storm, Storm's sort of very taken with it. 
actually. <laughs> oh, Warminster. Is right. A, Warminster is, and Stormer are just sort of like... Yes. Warminster is instantly in love. <laughs> he is writing some erotic friend fiction as we speak. <laughs> Involving crumpets and tea and, and like, <laughs> canonry. Yes. The hippo and the bunny lady. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and who else? Oh, E.S. Uh, Viliana, I believe. <clears throat> and her um, her friend, Princess Friendship. And her invisible friend. Who's... Right. You, you really get three for the price of one with Viliana. It is a value. <laughs> right, so a bonus tank as well, as I yes. understand. Right? Yes. Yeah, now, off the dollar menu with her. Um, <laughs> truly, <laughs> that is, Diliana in Drow actually needs dollar menu. Oh um, snap! <laughs> that Drow. There's no shade like Drow shade, especially if it's in your name. Yes. <laughs> um, you dollar menu, get in here. Oof. Yes, and she has an invisible friend, Starshine. And I, her, her matron is Princess Rainbow Sparkle, but I was idling at a very fun thought that is yet to develop, is that her true name will be some kind of uh, Kirbyan Rainbow-a-thon sparkle <laughs> or something sure. like that. <laughs> oh, she's really Terrigen yes. Mystic? Yes. Basically? Cool. Black again, Boltagon. Oh yeah, we figured out what Medusa is. Yeah, Medusa Lith. Medusa Lith is her Medusa -lith. first name. Medusa Lith. I actually yeah. think that's pretty legit, actually. Um, that part of the name. But yeah, so Viliana will be riding shotgun as our Diana or Donna Troy. She's the heart of the group, really. <laughs> uh, <laughs> She'll like run into a room with a mood overtaken with a feeling. <laughs> so, so the one thing about princess friendship is technically... Filiana may not know how to heal her yet. <laughs> yes. So well, there is a way to heal her, but it's not through healing magic. Mending? No. Mending will put her back together, but if her, like her essence is drained, like it, it, if like her hand fell off, you could mend it back together. But if she's like dead, you can't mend yeah. her back together or them. I don't know how we're going to. But as may be required, I, I could, of course, make a arcana roll. As I'm familiar with Warforged more than Golemry, but mm -hmm. I am, yeah, I'm any, not unfamiliar with Golemry. Anyone can make a arcana roll to figure out something about flesh golems. Right now, sure. Because yes, I think in chat you said um, uh, I'll be rolling a sixteen. Okay. Um, that a necromancer would do it, but I do know another way. Yes. Yes. Thirty twenty one. Ooh. With my negative one, that'll be nine. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Storm gets there a, a couple seconds before Hester, uh, but if you electrocute flesh golems, it will heal them. <sighs> right. So you deal lightning damage. Oh, and they hate <clears throat> fire, but she has said <clears throat> that several times. Yeah. She's Do you sure. have a, a shocking grass? Here, yeah, a lightning lore. Um... Eliana will have to invest in that on a level up. <laughs> um, Alvar says in a pinch, and he pulls out his like wand gun, and he kind of spins it, and he says, I can lightning bolt. Oh, great. Yeah, good. Well seen. I think I, I'm due to pick up a cantrip at, at next level up, so I could take it. Yes, right. Storm, that is. Clear. Right. <laughs> Well, it sort of works with cat for a static, I thought, mm -hmm. flavor-wise. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah, shuffle. Zap. It's shuffle. a proximal thing. He, like, rubs up against you, and you can't attack him. He's like, ugh. No. Kitty. Okay. So that was four. Yes. You could hire up to five, I believe I said. How do we all feel about Frosticles? <laughs> uh... He's untried. Uh, I mean, maybe we should put the the maybes to a test, and um, they could have a 
pit fighting, or we could fight them, <laughs> maybe to see how they fare. Well, we um, we're no longer so physically deficient, mm -hmm. and I feel like the uh, the bunny woman Viera, uh, the Viera, is it Viera, the Viera yes. bunny women, um, is fulfilling our dude bro role. Um, she is very dude broy. So Frostocles is on the bubble. My original intention with Throffin was that she could NPC is just a med bay hmm. operative. Uh, and maybe adding a value that Frostocles no longer does. But I I have no ill will towards Frostocles. Uh, but it did seem like he and our goblin were immediately not getting along. Um, uh, well... <laughs> In an odd couple kind of way. Yes, in an odd couple kind of way. But one has to wonder, will anyone, will Knifey get along with anyone? Or is he trying hmm. to angle for his own room? <laughs> Excellent point. Well, I mean, if there's any sort of tenure at work, he does have seniority of over I've any incoming people. Been here the whole time. He is a stowaway. <laughs> am, am, am I taking crazy pills or what? <laughs> Good Lord. Just... Oh no, he seems very honest to me. It's really easy to tell that he, he works. He does not a slacker because he uses his knife to mop. So you can always tell if he gets he's the been doing stuck his work. in the bucket and then just drags the bucket around the floor. <laughs> We've all seen it. He's trying well, his right. best. He's always he is working. trying his best. Yeah. Okay. His heart's in the right place. And, and his sometimes chest. his knife is also in the right place. In someone else's heart. Well, face. I he did send him on a, a suicide face. run against a warlock of Dendar, and he came back, so... I'd say that he passed his audition for, for sure. placement. I mean, yeah. he, but certainly more than Frostocles, because Frostocles recognized that we were the guys not to piss off after we killed opposition, whereas... Yes, but did Nike spend a lot of time down. sitting in that booth. He could and have he gotten it. up and punched somebody in the throat or something. It would have been more impressive. Definitely. I also wasn't in love with his description of, I believe it was Broen Out, as he called it. His his uh, activities? Yes. Right. His extracurriculars. Raison oh, d'etre. I, I don't think it came up, but I did intend um, that uh, Viliana can also cook. Oh, good. It is mostly mushroom based. I have to say, a <laughs> mushroom and terrible, oh, that's... terrible fish with like fifteen eyes. <laughs> but she has been quite taken by the cuisine since she has gotten out from underground. So, I would give her a secondary skill. Great. So she is not just taking up space okay. with her giant man's. So Viliana can cook. Corey can smith. It was a smith. Right. And that thing going on. Uh, Orpho, does, does, is he like um, like a tailor? I don't know. That's the first tool I thought of. <laughs> does, he have, uh, does he have any other? Or is he like a sailor even? He's. I know he's um, courtly. I remember he was courtly. He is courtly, yeah. He basically is kind of, you know, he's nobility. And he he knows fighting, really. And he knows dragon chess. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, he's always very up for a game. He's also willing to learn. Yeah, he Does might, he come uh, with any kind of artisan's tools or anything? I was going to say, he might no. be a good quartermaster, no. though, if he knows weapons and stuff. Yeah, he does. So, because right now, Warminster is like a swing man. He's, he's filling a bunch of roles. You could take quartermaster <laughs> from him. He needs a break. Yeah. yeah. He can go properly be a first mate and XO. Sure. Yes. Okay, Orpho can do that. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Now I'm just picturing the three of them kind of in yeah the bottom of the ship, and there's always a little, um, <laughs> like smithing noise anime or you know sound effect constantly. Um, Orpho is always like rearranging the. They all have this. They all have very. Very Even simple. when Corey's across the room, yeah, idle animations. Who's swinging the hammer? Oh, she's just, <laughs> just ambient noise. <laughs> she's not even working on anything. She's just doing it so that she can flex, probably. Okay. Um. um so. Yeah. <laughs> uh. 
it's a crossover well, to it, Beyond the Wall character. That brings up yeah. a bit of a point, which is something else we need to um, take care of up front. What is the tour of the ship? What? Uh, but oh, we've uh, we've seen mm-hmm. it from the outside. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, um, we're I, we're gonna. I'm gonna do that in a second. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. I want to hire everyone, and then we're all gonna do it together. <laughs> okay. Right. Great. So yeah. we have. Right, so the so the penguin orientation is just done once. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. 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 <laughs> Uh, they don't explain so the safety features more than once. Orpho, Corre, uh, Viliana, Crofin, right? And Minerva. Minerva, mm-hmm. that's five. And we're keeping Knifey, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. So that's our crew, is that right? I yeah. believe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Knifey kind of makes, makes a couple notations. And he says... Okay, you want me to handle this nice or my way? <laughs> my word. Um, Take the paper and hand it to Warman, sir. Oh, <laughs> right. I've had to fire more than one person in my day. Or not hire them, I guess. Well, I have to fire yes. Prostocles. Uh, oh. He kind of checks his gun. It'll be fine. Click. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. I will... Begin sorting my bags, shall okay. I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Alvar brings in, like, you know, one of those um, hotel dollies um, with all of your stuff just kind of haphazardly piled on it. <coughs> Did he get the bead curtains from the, the old... Um... Yeah, they're, they're in one giant knot, and it looks like he might have just cut the top of them. Oh, no. <laughs> Come on. Oh, maybe this one will have doors. Did he bring some of his yeah. pipes? Did you... <laughs> there, it does look like at the bottom, it's just a couple pipes. Although some I of those to. aftermarket parts were part of what the uh, the doa were after. So mm-hmm. it was yeah, he didn't take air pipes. He didn't take all of my improvements. <laughs> How many footlongs made it onto the dolly? Warminster just winks at you. <laughs> then he kicks open the door and he says, "Right, you lot. Okay." <laughs> As an Englishman. English shipper. Oh, that's cold! Oh, (laughs) Oh, no. That's going poorly. (laughs) Okay. Uh, After a couple minutes, he returns. Uh, He does look a bit frostbitten, uh, and he is pulling a knife out of his arm. Oh, no! Knifey? Yeah, there you are. (laughs) Um, he said, well, by all accounts, that went fairly well. <laughs> Capital, yes. Shall we investigate our new ship? Oh, we'll yes. Have, we'll yes. have to think of a name. It can't be the Centurion Hawk anymore. That's kind of looks at Alvar. T- uh, sorry. Yes. Uh, well, let's take a look through the thing and uh, perhaps the name was correct yeah. 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 right um, and yes quickly I will message Willow Tanky uh, Frosticles actually isn't a spell user so specifically um, any alt use we might uh, have need of just so that we've established a connection if they can send a message later okay it will take the forms of a. We regret to inform you. <laughs> your services were we, will not were be we maybe going to see about giving Willow a ride, though, even if we don't take her on as a crew member? Well, currently, I believe our next stop is Amonkhet to deal with Nyogi slavers. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we don't have. Well, to it's do possible Jax yet. was taken by one. Well, uh, that is perhaps true. I'd say let's leave her out of the immediate danger, and should we get a clue, there wise. Hmm. If you go out to look for her, she's already slipped off in a way. I forgot where I was. <laughs> well, I forgot. Uh, uh, best of luck to her. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, we were having a good couple weeks. <laughs> It'll be fine. Okay. 
Uh, and good, we're back on Twitch. Okay, so we went through the crew. Everyone was fired. Okay, so um, uh, a there's a there's a knock at the door. Uh, and a voice on the other side says, I'm here to escort you to your ship. Uh, capital. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, I answer the door and hand my bags over. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> this... Wonderful. Hold on. Let me get a, let me get a picture. Off this book and I'm using it, damn it. <laughs> a man who looks like that. <laughs> a man, you say? Uh, yes, he it, he is dressed in, I mean, fairly g gender neutral clothing, but he's wearing he's wearing clothes. He's got a um, kind of a like a cowboy hat on. He's got a um, a sheriff star. He's wearing a vest, um, pants. He doesn't seem to be wearing a shirt under the vest. You can see his kind of luminescent blue green flowing skin under there um and he's got like two wands in his uh hol in holsters and he he his arms stretch to kind of catch your bags and then he pulls them closer to him okay so he's dressed like a sheriff he's dressed like a sheriff and his little badge says constable on it that is adorable and he's sensibly sized uh, he's about four feet tall. Yeah, a little tall, but maybe okay. a little tall for you, but for your taste. Yes. <laughs> hey, thank you. And and what does he want with us? Uh, he's here to escort you to your ship. Okay. <clears throat> Lead on, constable. Uh, thank you very much. Kind of. He uh he starts to amble down the hallway, and he says, "It's right this way." Um, he says, uh, hope you've enjoyed your stay here. Uh, rather nice. Uh, I, I like to personally make sure everyone gets off, off rock, uh, especially with new ship purchases. Can't always trust the Doar, if you know what I mean. Um, no, no, no. Uh, sometimes their business practices are a little, uh. Uh, they don't always sell top-notch merchandise. I just want to make sure you get out of here and I don't have to tow you back. Well, uh, th thank you. That, that That's uh, appreciated. Yeah. Certainly. Uh, like a third hand kind of appears from his the middle of his chest that he tips his hat at you. <laughs> oh. Some kind of ambulatory jellyman. <clears throat> a like me-boyd, but yes. A oh, me boy. Hmm. Ah, well, well met. Another hand appears to wave at you behind behind his okay, shoulder. Please stop doing that. Okay. Uh, no okay. problem. <laughs> right. Certainly, we, maybe we could hire on someone like this. Very handy. Oh. What? <laughs> very very drum. Well, very drum. <laughs> All right, let's um, let's see to it then. Okay, if it perfect works, engineer type, glare at Alvar <laughs> again. What, what do I do this time? I don't know. Apparently, they might. They're prone to selling us half a ship or something. I, I've never had a problem. That's a. That's honestly. I mean, if we're gonna be, it's an offensive stereotype. Yeah, well, that's. Well, I don't trade in that. Uh, Warminster looking over Alvar's head is just like. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, if Manchun wanted a bunch of these shits, <clears throat> can't be all that bad, right? We're trading on his name. It's gonna be fine. They don't want to piss off a Manchun. Oh, that's that's an excellent point. That's Three true. People do. Okay. Are they <laughs> anyone I mean... out to make an enemy of Manchun? <laughs> oh, I pity that. <laughs> so. You all enter a space dock, and you see 
a ship that looks like that. Tell me if I need to move it one way or another, Timothy. Uh, I can see. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Looks like a Shi'ar bug ship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's very... So, um, and it's a little hard to see some of the details, uh, perhaps. But the but the front, the big eyes, it looks like that's where the cockpit, or like a, mm -hmm. a like a viewing port is. The the space, the Spelljammer helm is probably somewhere in the middle, because that typically is the safest point. Yes. Because you don't need to be able to see. You need the most ship around you to protect you. Um, right. There is an exposed aft deck below the wings. Um, and you can see there is a uh, a ballista ma mounted above the head and a catapult mounted towards the rear of the the ship. Uh, and Warminster's kind of like, not enough guns. <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah, it's a good start, though, isn't it? Um, you can always add more. But it, it typically, it looks a little... It's a lot. It's bigger than the gnomish uh, steam junker you had. The armor does not look as thick, but it, it looks like it's a lot more nimble. Just kind of from what you're seeing, it's not a, a literally a flying hunk of junk steamboat. Um, so it's likely faster and more maneuverable, yes. just not as tough. Just not as tough. So perhaps someone might have to talk to Alvar about his maneuvering techniques, where sometimes he would just barrel through things because he could. It's right. a shortcut, he would say. <laughs> I'm trusting Minerva to have some say there, yeah. too. But um, Oh, and Minerva has uh, reappeared along with uh, your interns. And Minerva is now wearing, like, a blue sailor officer uniform with a small cap. Uh, she doesn't have pants on, but she's just wearing, like, kind of the coat. I love her so much. <laughs> uh, Storm will offer to take her bag. Oh, she very, very thankfully um, offers it to you and and is very, um, very thankful and grateful and talks about how you're such a gentleman. And, and oh, oh, I'm I'm happy to uh, happy to assist at our, our new navigate tricks um, or navigate tricks, I should say. Um. <laughs> she smiles and uh, winks one of her giant owl eyes. That is terribly clever. Timothy oh. and Storm alike. <laughs> <laughs> I like that very much. Uh, yeah, Storm sort of blushes under his fur, I think, a little bit. If you mm -hmm. can tell. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> yeah, and she, she looks at the ship and she says, excellent. And she takes out a um, small scroll and she start, seems to start doing like a safety checklist. Oh, good. Nice. Finally, Very sound choice. A side eye, Alva. <laughs> and it looks over. You don't need to do half of those. Um, <laughs> the amoeboid goes and uh, starts talking to a doar, who uh, gestures for someone on the boat to lower the the plank, which is in um, kind of like between the between the um, between the legs of the dragonfly. Uh, a plank lowers, and um, the uh, the constable and Warminster start loading all of the bags on board. Uh, and Bubbles, the giant space hamster, lumbers out of wherever he was sleeping. He's covered in hay, um, and he just gets most of the way up the ramp and falls over. So Warminster and uh, the amoeboid have to walk around him. <laughs> He's happy there. Leave him alone. But, uh, but he can't stay. I can, I'm gonna encourage. I'm gonna shoulder Minerva's bag mm -hmm. with one paw and just sort of try and encourage Bubs up the ramp. Okay, yeah, he does that cat thing where he takes like two more steps and then flops down again. And uh, you just I message yeah, Bubsy. <laughs> Scratching him. Please. <laughs> Please. Uh, That's Bubs. all I can do. Yeah, you hear an Bubs. audible sigh and he gets up and gets all the way up gonna... the ramp and then slightly gets out of the way. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. That's good. <sighs> and then he starts lightly snoring. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess that's a good sign. If it didn't feel right, he wouldn't feel at home. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, 
Real quick, do the, are the wings functional? Will they actually take part in the flying? Um, or are they ornamental? Or ornithoptic or ornamental, right? Uh, they they do one. actually flap, yes. Okay. Cool. And at rest, do they like fold up, down? Do they? Um, they're yeah, they're they kind of fold in, so they don't yes. fold like down or anything, but they're like flat against the the mast of the ship. Perfect. Oh, All right. Cool. So yes, I will go in and Popsy move past, and um, surveil my. Partial interest shit yeah. for the now, time being. Yeah. Uh, so looking around, it looks like um, that perhaps other other versions of this ship have less crew quarters and more cargo space. Because mm-hmm. um, one of the selling points of the ship from the Doar is technically you don't need a very big crew to run it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a fairly efficient ship. It's one of the kind of common workhorses of, of, of the flow. But it will run efficiently and everyone will will function better in a bigger ship where you can take or a bigger crew where you can take shifts and such. Mm-hmm. Um, but so the, so the interior, it looks like part of the cargo hold was made into cruise quarters, but um, there's enough sleeping for everyone. Okay. You're going to be sharing bunks with people. Um, it's going to be fairly tight, but it doesn't, it looks Dibs like on Molly. Yeah. I was going to yeah. say dibs on Hester. <laughs> Uh, so how many people do we have total? They do that thing when, like, the camp counselor, like, starts talking about how you're going to have to room up and you start, like, slowly inching towards your friend (laughs) that you probably want to be put in with. (laughs) Then they're like, okay, everyone count off. One, two, one, two. And you're like, oh! And then you quickly start to try and arrange yourself. This is going to work. Yeah, the thing where you're doing the mental map. No, 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 no. No, switch. Switch. (laughs) Do, okay. Does the drow and the flesh golem count as one or two? How many numbers are they getting? <laughs> <laughs> Need to know quickly. Okay, so let's see. So total we have. All right. One. So are we going to go? Are we? How are we separating groups? Are we having Twelve? like upper staff and interns separate? Yeah, there or? there are there are no. So so yeah, I will say. Let's say that uh, the main crew. They get like doubles, and then mm-hmm. the the interns all kind of have to sleep in one. Sure, like Barracks. with a bunch of hammocks and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Like a hostel situation. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, that could be friendly. Yeah. So, so Warminster and Alvar say they'll they'll bunk together. They're used to it. Um. Uh, and then I'm shipping them. <laughs> Uh, Marley and Hester. So, mm-hmm. Storm, you can either try and claim a solo room or try or with Knifey. Or Orpha. <laughs> oh, or Orpha. You can upgrade one of the interns. <laughs> you share a room with me, kid. You'd, you'd never uh, be at a shortage for a dragon chess partner. Very That's good. true. That's true. Yeah, Storm could do that. Okay. Uh, even, even have the three of them. Knifey and Orpho and, and uh, Storm all room together. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, Knifey doesn't take up too much room. That's the room that. you don't want to walk into if you're an intruder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just yeah. just hear a bunch of swords unsheathing and Storm. Wait, what's happening? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Counter charm. Exactly. <laughs> uh Counter charm, counter spell. Just can't ring at all. Uh, You see you guys all exploring the ship. You find where the helm is. It's in a smaller room than was true on the the gnomish junk junk wheeler. Um, It's very, it's it's almost like a cerebro kind of room. Like it's a perfect circle. Um, It kind of suspends in the cargo hold area. Um, Mm -hmm. And... uh, it's made of fairly thick metal, so it, it it's almost like the ship's black box. Like, hmm. well, the spell jammer will survive. <laughs> that's the most right. that's the most expensive, important part of the ship. That that's made of something really strong, adamantine or something. Um, so, if worst came to worst, everybody could pile yeah, try in and there. pile as many people in. It's like I said, right. it's not huge, but for sure, the four of you, or the three of you could fit. Yes, 
Sorry, woman. Sit up. No. Wait. <laughs> Someone cast reduce on me. <laughs> I can take up the space of anyone here but Alvar, so I don't count. Okay, so... Um... And the, and the yeah. eyes, the kind of, is that, mm -hmm. I, I could see it either as being kind of like the the congregation room of kind of the commons or a bridge. Do we have so, a... Do... So it's a bit of both. It's, it's, um, oh, what the hell is it called on the next gen? Dunin's, uh... It's like forward 10 or something like that. Um, the bar on Star Trek The Next Generation. Yeah, um, the Dunin's bar, right? Yeah. Or is that a name? That might be on Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg, who's yeah, oh Guinan. Yeah. Her name's Guinan. Guinan, Guinan, not Dunan. Um, yeah, but it's called like Af Ten or something like that. But anyway, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like a little commissary area. That's where probably um, uh, Viliana would set up to to be the cook. But at the, at the very front of it, there's it, it kind of like lowers down, like it's um plat like um yeah like split level. Uh, so there are stairs down, and there it, it looks like there's a small area where the navigate trick Strix navigate Strix uh, <laughs> can do her job. Cool. Great. Uh, yeah, and, and any other questions about the ship as you were all looking around? I don't oh. think so. I'm. It's also clean looking now, but mm -hmm. um, I have to admit I have a bit of goosebumps. This is exciting. Yeah. Yeah, Alvar. Uh, Alvar, despite himself, is kind of looking around, and there is a slight smile on his face. Of. Yeah, the. You might have nostalgia for the old thing, but new is always cool. There's a lad. Well, there's a lot more of us now you're going to have to care for. And I promise we'll start turning a profit. Just one more thing, though. Kind of looks up at you and he says, Yeah. We, or we could just go. And he kind of gestures at the ship. Look at it. We can just take it wherever we want. I can't stop you. I won't stop you. I don't particularly look forward to it, but I just fear that the next place we stop for two minutes we're going to be jumped by some intellectually distinct Indiana Jones franchise ripoffs or, or <laughs> Fire perhaps next. Like, I'm just saying... Um. I don't fancy running for my life and performing our mission, so... Um, Alvar says, you're not wrong, I just don't want you to be right. No, nah, there's a lad, you're not the first. All right, <laughs> I'm going to go put my bags down. I guess the constable didn't come along. Oh, you know, oh, he, the... he loaded all the bags, so, so he's... He's kind of he's been helping Warminster pull bags up, but it, when he sees you'd like to go into your room, he goes and fetches your bags and, and brings them okay. over to you. There's also a flesh golem carrying some amount oh, of bags. Yes. Over there. I see. <laughs> she can also take some getting used to. <laughs> right. Yeah. Does Princess Friendship wear an outfit or want an outfit or They've got a crown, right? <laughs> like a floral like a little sparkle crown. But yeah. other than that, it's like just <laughs> patchy frankenflesh kind of thing kind of loincloth we could get it yeah i do think they wear like a little to to protect their modesty yeah <laughs> yes exactly i'm kind well, of imagining since villian is in like the the cook situation that maybe it has a apron that says kiss the cook <laughs> oh nice <laughs> this is going to be some interesting cooking considering the flesh golem hates fire uh yes <laughs> I well, hope everyone so is ready for a raw vegan really, diet. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, we could try... It's a lot of pressure cooking, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah, steam, yeah. something. Mm 
Well, and especially uh, if you're in the flow, you do have to do that anyway. So yes. a lot of raw yeah. foods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nuts. raw vegan. Yes, jerky. Raw mushrooms. Oh, uh, what's um ceviche? We just cook oh, using look. salt or mm -hmm. uh, storm would like that. I yes. do not, but yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> bunch of chilled soups, garbage. <laughs> Soup is warm. Oh no, ceviche is like. Um, Cut up raw fish, no. onions, yeah, and lemon. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, I was saying. Oh, yes, yes. In Another addition, one. you could have chilled soups, and I just <laughs> oh, I, like I hate, soir, yeah, I hate uh, chilled um, soups. Uh, what's the other one? The uh... gazpacho. That can be cold. Yes, gazpacho. Yes. It's just savory yogurt, and I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> savory yogurt. Um. Well, yes, it gets set up. Uh, with Molly and Me, a famous movie coming this spring. Um, now, all the, uh, like, all right, so there's kind of a common dog, area. Right? <laughs> yeah. So there's kind of the common area slash Neva Gastrix mm -hmm. station. And I'm kind of envisioning like one thin hallway leading to the metal black box that is the helm. Mm hmm. Now, do we go down into the sides here for the rooms, down into the cargo bay? Yes. Yes. I'm kind of considering this part, like one part luxury liner a bit, and then kind of into the, uh... oh, where did the iris sleep? Um, Below deck, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The... Is it the bilge? No, what's the... I think that's right. Sounds about right. Is it the bilge? Yeah. yeah hold on. I'll um, just Google where did the where did the <laughs> Irish sleep Titanic? Peat uh, bog. I I believe it's the boat butt. That's the boat, boat butt. butt. Yes. Right. That's where the catapult is. Yeah. In the in the rear. I like how we're going to be attacking from its butt. Uh, <laughs> when we walk up a plank between its legs. I'm not going to Google poor people boat. That's a bad idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't find it with a quick that. Google. It was just yeah. Uh, okay. But yeah, but yes, it is a bit, um, certainly not inhumane, but it's fairly utilitarian use of space. No one's going to really have a personalized area. It's you maybe have a poster, a picture, and your hammock. It's a sailing ship. <laughs> yeah. Like the Pequod or something. Um, but a bug shape. Um, and then the top deck area is... Um, there is uh, plenty of area when the wings kind of expand. You'd be able to see very far off uh, in wild space especially. There is a mast where with a crow's nest if you want to go up there. Um, and then, like I said, um, uh, on the front is a ballista and on the back is a catapult. Cool. Um, yeah, Storm will probably spend a lot of time up in the crow's nest. Mm -hmm. um, but technically, we'll have his quarters, I guess, with the, the other two. Just because it's the highest place in the ship. It's got a little scratching post. <laughs> well, yeah. Or it's just, you know, got to be in the highest place. Yeah. Got to be able to look around. It just makes me think of those cat trees. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, right. The, the, the part in the top, the little yeah. cup, his tail, yeah. like, you'll see, is he up there? You'll see his tail, like, sticking up. <laughs> just over the top. Okay. <coughs> uh, what would you all like to do now? Well, uh, so w we've checked out the safety inspection according to Minerva's criteria. Uh, yeah, Minerva gives you the thumbs up. Um, the constable kind of looks around and he says, yeah, seems good. Okay, and the penguin, what are they called? Do what are they called? Uh, the Dewar. The Dewar. Mm -hmm. the They're 
they're there. They've signed off. It's mm-hmm. all good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, every okay. everything went according to plan. Uh, they've received their money. Uh, you've received your ship and said that uh, Manchun will soon be uh, here to pick up his fleet. Do we need to wait for Manchun or are we free to go? Uh, you all are free to go, yeah. Do we want to wait for Manchun to just connect? Not particularly. Well, but, I mean, what, we've accomplished two-thirds, is that right? Of our plan? No, the, you, yeah, did, you did all three tasks of Manchun. All three, that's yeah. right, that's yeah. right. The third was so with have... juice machine. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> drink it. Right. What's this do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well then, we want to go on to... Amonkhet? Amonkhet, I suppose, yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Unless we can, like, ask Minerva where some red dragons are hanging out. Um, She says... Well, yes, Amonkhet does have dragons, although... They are unlike any dragons you might be familiar with. They're more like... They're more bestial. They're less cunning. Hmm. Like a white dragon? Uh, a bit like a white dragon, but but all of the all of the chromatic dragons are that, like that level of intelligence. They, they look like crocodiles, even. Um, giant hmm. winged crocodiles. Still can breathe fire and acid, though. Can hmm. I, like, search my dream memory to think of it looked more crocodile like than yeah dragon. if if you were recalling it looked more like a proper dragon okay okay so yeah we're we're looking for more proper dragon uh she says she takes out her flow map let's see let's go flow flow uh, uh she says are we hunting dragons not hunting. We are casually uh, inquiring about dragon. Um, she says, well, there is, of course, realm space. Mm-hmm. Um, gray space. Uh, fate space. Let's see. Other spaces. A lot of options. Scrolling. Scrolling. Let's see. Did that one. Um, she says other planets in mana space do have more traditional dragons, just not almond cats. Um, Elsir space is nearby. They have, they have dragons. Um, uh, yes, uh, plenty of options. I'm sure I could even think of more if if. Yeah, um, you give me some time and and a map. Um, could I like narrow down my search criteria with you, Minerva? Do you know a lot about these uh, different spaces, perhaps? Uh, the ones I just listed, yes, I I am familiar with. Okay, could I like filter for like roll big scary red dragons that are powerful enough to possibly be hiding an artifact from a god okay wow weird alvar just kind of looks at what are you talking about it's don't worry about it i'm worried about it (laughs) Uh, yes we we should we get to that should we let him know i mean he's driving I am trying. Kind of. I uh, mean... Perhaps before we get into that, we should save him from his slaver debt, and then he will owe us one. Oh, yeah. Just, just a suggestion. So oh, slaver debt just first, kind of while Minerva you. maybe does some research for us. Um, right. She says, "Well, well, off the top of my head." Realm space, gray space, crin space, uh, Elsier space, uh, fate space. They have dragons, but they but they are not particularly. It's a 
It's a newer sphere, so they aren't particularly ancient and dread. They're hmm. they're strong, but there aren't really any legendary dragons from Fate Space. Crin Space. Yes, lots of dragons in Crin Space. That's a bit of a problem. I, I feel like I've heard yeah, something. Alvar's like that. The, no, we don't we need to go back to Crin. No, yes, that's where Alvar's from. Yeah, no, no, they don't have it. It's a uh, it's complicated. Their dragon situation. Um, got fixed and then it's bad again it's just always bad it's always it just keeps gods keep coming back and dying and it's just not great yes i love their non-intervention strategy it's, um yeah, it's real helpful when we're all dying to draconians great <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. but he said we definitely shouldn't go back to print space um i'm sure it's not there Okay. Uh, <sighs> oh, is that Marley? Uh, nothing. <clears throat> I mean, I was just saying you don't even know what it is, so how do you know it's not there? Right. No further questions. <laughs> I have a ship to fly. <clears throat> Where are we going, though? Yes. On the jet. Yep. Yes. Um... Give him a moment to get acquainted with the idea. Um, Warminster, my dear man. Yes. Uh, a word. Of course, yes. Um, are you Gets down on one familiar knee. with um, Crazen? <laughs> how, we, how are we pronouncing this? Uh, I, I believe I accidentally named him Crazen, yes. <laughs> um, were, were, were you affiliated with Alvar, when he took on this debt, and no, no, I met him afterwards. Um, so the only thing I knew of it was that he um, he borrowed money for the ship, and he was working towards paying them back. I didn't really know the whole slave rebellion thing. Totally for it, but yeah, yes, no, it's I didn't know admirable. quite how, quite how. I again, I knew some of it, but not all of it. I see. Uh, and quick question of, uh, I will do it through character. Uh, well, Mr. Does this have like dinghies that can go planet side and back or do we land? Oh, yes. No, these are awesome. I found them. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> um, sure. Who's more excited? Andy or Warminster? <laughs> yes. The answer is yes. Um, so he pulls out what looks like a, like um it's almost like a like a like a central like plant mass like almost like a, a piece of bark and it's got some vines sticking out of it and he says gadabouts i've never seen one in person before and he puts one on his chest and the vines grow around him and then a bubble appears above his big head and gossamer wings appear behind behind him and he says, they're like jetpacks! <laughs> Molly, Molly. Yeah? What's up? Oh. I'm just not sure if you have to save him from this or what. It, it, your bubble well, is going well, around well, your whole hippo face. Yes. I mean, okay. And then he, he kind of he kind of oh. leans back and he starts to fly off the ground slightly. Oh. He says, they can That's be so used kind of for s short excursions into wild space. Or as landing craft. Okay. Well, I was just thinking perhaps we shouldn't take Alvar to Crazen. Or we should in kind of what we call a, a Wookiee endeavor. Which is, yeah. Lead him in as if you're turning him in for the bounty. And then he... Mm. Roars. That always works. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care for your tone and your sudden American accent, well, Mr. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm more of a Lando myself. <laughs> so I'll get on on the inside. Have a weird mask that I keep pulling down so everyone can see my face. Yes, we'll do that for and about then six do months. Jack shit when the fight happens. <laughs> Manchun, Manchun, where? Sounds sounds perfect. Phob a bit. Phob a bit. Um. <laughs> Okay, 
Sounds like that. Uh, so, yes, team, actually, let's... Uh, option one, mm-hmm. we, flit, we flip the ship around in space so it's not in direct danger of being seized either. Uh, put all our interns and new security in charge of keeping Alvar safe, and we go down to take care of the Neogi threat. Or we bring Alvar with, and perhaps the ship, we land maybe not directly next to the place we need to go, and kind of go there and try to negotiate formally for, hey, fuck off forever, Alvar is ours. That will be the much more expensive route. Mm-hmm. I'm open to anything. This is kind of my first whatever this is. Mm. Team meeting? Alvar raises his hand. You in the back, yes? Yes, um, Alvar. Captain Alvar, captain of the ship. Why don't we just don't go? I, Look, you are on record, Alva. Thank you. You're welcome. I just like to we, formally lodge it. Continue. I know you're not going to listen to me. Yeah. Reductio ad absurdum. I, I'm not uh, against it. I'm just saying that we're here. We're right next to the thing, and we can take care of it now. I'm. I am all for fleeing. Really, I, just... I, I. I agree. It's really a matter of approach, and you know. Do we want to put everything in, as far as, Hester, as far as your first question, do we want to bring everything down there at once, the ship and everything, and Alvar? I mean... I vote no, but then I don't exactly know what our exit strategy is. If I mean, Niyogi are terrifying. Oh, the, yeah. oh, the worst! <laughs> Look, they're, they are. And certainly there are he's a lot not in a position of terrifying... to bodies and money uh, without some form of organization around him. Uh, we handled that bar extremely well, but I would expect it to be at least, at least five times that. Yeah, I don't think we should bring him in at all. Because no, that's actually, giving I mean, them what... I was busy being surreptitious asking Wilman, so he doesn't have first-hand... At- Alva, yeah, what do you got? How fucked are we? Oh, terribly. The Neogi are awful. Why do yeah, you think they're trying yes, to leave? Crazy and specific. I notice you're reluctant to go see face him, but like center of a vast criminal empire, or like a bookie in a bar. Like, what do we? Not more the former. He has a like a lot of people work for him. How protected is he directly? I mean, you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, group photo, real quick. Warminster, Storm. Okay, Marley. Um, can we do it? Oh, he kind of he kind of looks around for the first time. He's like, oh, oh, maybe. Yes, of course we can. So, do we have like a plan? Not. Precisely yet. Like, I know that right now we're making a plan for, like, should we go there all as a group or should we all not? But then once we get there, do we have a plan? Well, if we sneak Alvar in as if we caught him, boss, and get us in the door, and then it's just like mind fireball and. Oh, so you want to fight? Okay. Swinging off of things, and then we don't even need to bring him in directly. We could just bring in something that is supposed to be him. Well, but that might be the difference between fighting our way to him. Well, what if fighting Al- just Alvar, we disguise, Alvar kind of like... disguise Princess Sunshine to look like Alvar? <laughs> She's really tall. She's really big. But Alvar does kind of look. <laughs> Alvar kind of like like puts his hand up to almost measure his height versus Knifey's. He's like. See, bagger, I, bag over his head. Who's gonna be able to tell the difference? What about Stabby? Is he still hanging around? <laughs> uh, Knifey says, As much as I don't like him, I could not do that to my brother. Yes, he got very protective of his brother <laughs> suddenly. Um, um I, okay, I would yes. do it for you, my dearest friends. Perfect. 
We sneak in Knifey. Does anyone have any illusory spells? Uh, when I switch characters real quick to see whether or not Villiana could do it. Yeah. No. I don't think so. I don't yeah. really. Alvar's garbage. Warminster's garbage. <laughs> Nobody else can cast spells. Uh, All right, Polymorph. Yeah. Well, I can make him look like something for an hour, so I'll make him look like Alvar. Yeah, I... Uh, this did recent, and this is not to force your hand, but this did recently come up on uh, Critical Role, where it's a matter of creatures of a certain dice threshold, and is not a gnome a creature? It's up to you if you want to use it like that, but oh no, because uh, yeah, no, uh, yeah, you can do it. He just doesn't have any Al of Alvar's powers, right? He's right. a CR one. Yeah, gnome. he's just a he's a no, looks... he's like a yeah a, a commoner or whatever stats. He just looks like a gnome. Yes. Right. He's the same guy. He just looks like knife or it looks like Alvin. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um I don't know how Matt Mercer ruled that, but that's how I'm going to do it. No, yeah, he was like, yeah, that's that's free. You yeah, cuz you're getting no advantage from it. It's not like you have yeah, claws. You're just you're and essentially just... using a better spell slot to cast like a disguise spell. spell or disguise. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so there we go. We've got it. We take Knifey down to the surface. We pretend he's Alvar. We try to negotiate our way in. Now, we all have to look pretty hard here. Now, you look very daring, do Storm. If we slick your hair back, I think you'll look like a maid cat. I and um, Marley, you're very spooky, but you have a terrible way of just the truth just vomits out of you so don't talk you'll be our silent you'll be our boba fett um i'll channel my family do um, you want to be the face pester oh um cool <laughs> War um warminster looks from hester to storm <laughs> from hester back to storm you pulled it off, Don't my dear. Don't want to mess with us, lot. Well, I find that accent very offensive. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, because I can present myself more roguey, and, and they may not need to know that I'm the caster or a caster. I do have a maid's outfit. Oh. You do have one maid's outfit. So you're going to be our... Right. They don't know what it is. Yes, I'll so, be your uh, mall. Okay, great. But all right, so so I am gonna be the face. Is that it? Uh, yes. All right, sure. And, so uh, we've apprehended Alvar, and we're here for the reward. That's our way in, and then yeah. we're going to get in uh, there and go. Bam, bam, bam. Reduce him to a state of. Uh, uh, a position he uh, we're an, we're going to make him an offer he can't refuse. Yes. Now, Warminster. Yeah. We might need you and a bit of a B crew to be available to shoot us out from the outside. <laughs> <laughs> He's so happy. There's a lad. <clears throat> Is it his birthday? <laughs> All right, well, let's get this done. Great. I rush off to put on my maid's outfit. Okay. <laughs> okay. Marley uh, will spend some time in the mirror trying to, like, work on an angry face. <laughs> and she'll kind of, like, pull her hair back maybe into, like, a very short ponytail. Like, yeah, this, this puts me in the... <laughs> angrier state of mind. <laughs> Don't you look like your brother, a paladin? Try to not show any approval like your father while dressed like your brother. <laughs> yeah, she'll try and make herself look as much like her brother. And he's a warlock, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> okay. okay, so um, you all start to, 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 to break up and uh, go about your business as um... Alvar gets himself into the helm, and you all feel uh, the ship 
rise out of the dock. Uh, you can hear the legs pull up and the wings extend. Uh, and uh, you leave um, the half mast and you leave the little, uh, or the big, uh, glacier asteroid behind. Um, and you start to approach what looks like a desert planet with two small suns um, rotating around it. Hmm. Didn't even have to add that part. Um, and yes, and I, I try to like gussy myself up a bit so I look very, you know, I'm not trying to look like a maid. I'm just trying to use that as my base. I want to look like like a sorcerer. Sure. So, so you kind of yeah, you take like the black, like bottom layer dress, and you what do you like unbutton it? What do you do? <laughs> yeah, just kind of like. Coughing it up. I didn't read books, you know. <laughs> Never read a book in my life. Uh, yeah, that's. Yeah, I don't know how I can I sweep um... my fringe a little bit to the side there? There we go. Knife, he's holding <laughs> a mirror up for you. Okay, thank you. Bless you. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. Go I'm going to leave my hat behind, I think. I think that's going to help. Um, uh, yeah, so I'll just sort of put on um, a common sort of clothes over the top. It's good. Uh, hmm. All right. So you've been here before, Alvar? Uh, he says, no, never here. Uh, the Niyogi must have relocated from the last time I dealt with him. So, uh, I'm going to propose that we cover up Knifey's face so that I can just polymorph him right before we reveal him or something. Because uh, we don't know just how close we're going to get before we're in the presence of who we need to face, right? Cause... Mm-hmm. Yeah, see? Yeah, that sounds right. Hey, there you go. I'll go full Australian with it. <laughs> Australian sorcerer. Like it. Lock, lock um, the thing, isn't it? <laughs> um, okay, so... But then, yes, do you have any, like, extra vests or something we can put on... Oh, I'm yeah, Alvar. Alvar has so many vests. <laughs> uh, Borminster has capes, if anybody needs a cape. Yeah. Oh. Uh... Well, do you have a hack cape? Because anything you put on me is going to... Full balloon, right, uh, everywhere. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> well, I, I am rather broad-chested. Um... <laughs> Big boned. Yes. Uh, he <laughs> says he'll see what he can do. Okay. Uh, Knifey offers someone his hat. Hey, boy, hold my hat. I'm helping. Uh, hmm. The only person it would even remotely fit is Hester. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> to take any life forms out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a while. Try to try to jaunt it. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. Really pulling it off, Mrs. De Cabin. Oh, oh, thank you. You're getting there. <laughs> Isn't it? Channel your inner knoll. Your inner knoll. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yes, I'll, I'll be crazy. Yeah. If you're laughing about something that's not there. Don't think you're mean. I don't know. I'll do a whole Bellatrix Lestrange thing. Yeah, I don't know who that is. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like we really had a moment. (laughs) Probably played by Tim Burton's wife anyway. (laughs) Um, Okay, so after a bit of time traveling, 
Um, it, it even probably takes a full day, so everyone gets a long rest. I don't know if you needed one or not, but... Yep. I'm going to give uh, Stuck some mm -hmm. die rolls, if you don't mind. Okay, it's a 10 and 3 on the dice. Okay. So not great, but might be good counter. Two successes and a death save. Uh, so, so yeah, you, um, you, you approach the 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 desert planet of Amenket, which has two suns, as I said. And as you start to how how so so what do you want to do with the ship? Do you want to get it close and then fly down to the surface using the the gadabouts, or do you want to just land it somewhere? Well, we need it close enough to shoot in case like we get in trouble. Yeah, not to be a, not to put too fine a point on it. Is there like a most Eisley to a Jabba's remote palace like route here? Is there like so so as you're flying over the um the planet, Sorry. it oh boy, it looks bad. Like the whole yeah, planet yeah. looks bad. Uh, you pass by a river that you're almost a hundred percent sure is made of blood. Ooh. Okay. Um and. Flying over the desert, you don't see any people. Fly, you see a city, and flying over that, you don't really see any people. Uh, but can I get perception checks from everyone, please? Yeah. <clears throat> Twelve. Okay. Thirteen. Thirteen? Twenty-six. There's the druid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and the crew is mostly unhelpful. Yeah. Um. So so you see a bunch of um, like what looked like they used to be golden monuments, and they're kind of all crumbled and and corroded slightly. Uh, yeah, it just looks like something really really bad happened here. Um. And as you are approaching the city, uh, and flying over it, kind of doing a, a pass, um, you can see that. Off in the distance, it does look like one area might be inhabited. You can see some, or Marley can see some fires, smoke rising, and the buildings look, um, at least on the outskirts of it, like they are better maintained. It looks like there's some kind of, something crashed into the middle of the building. You don't know if maybe one of these monuments fell or something. You can't really tell from here. But there's like a big area of destruction surrounded by slightly better maintained buildings, and it looks like those are occupied. Okay, I'll kind of point out okay. that hey, over there, it um, looks maybe there's people there. Yeah. In addition, uh, you see on the horizon a sphinx is flying towards you. Huh. Uh. Also, uh, sphinx on the horizon. And is this why we're in gadabouts, or is this why we're kind of skimming the? You're the kind surface of, of yeah, you're kind of skimming yeah. the surface. Um. I realize oh. I don't have to call back because he can just hear us if he's on the helm, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, knock on the deck. Uh, sphinx. What, what What kind of sphinx? Can we tell? Um, uh, does yeah. It, does it present as a... Andro sphinx or a gyno sphinx? Gyno, whatever. hyro, hyro. hyro. Oh, they might have some unique flavors here. Yeah, I mean... The uh, Rocky I, Road. I make sure that Willow is in existence, by the way. Um, um, I know it's a computer screen looking at a computer screen, but let's see if that can. <laughs> oh, I'm familiar with that art. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, so, Beautiful. So they kind of have they they have a, a roughly human face with um like a like a headdress made of feathers and fur, uh, and their eyes are their eyes are blue. It looks like you'd say a boy sphinx from here. Mm hmm. Uh. It, okay. Let's onto the deck. Yeah. Uh. Definitely. So go up on deck. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I uh, summon Willow, who I'm calling Cypress in my alter ego. <laughs> Committed a character. As 
Bellastrix Derange. <laughs> uh, <sighs> Shouldn't that be the, the owl's name, Bellastrix? Because I have the owl, see? The owl's name is Cypress, don't be stupid. What you said is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> I'm a pretty owl. Crazy. Uh, okay. Yeah, great. So, how? what is the... Vi- can we tell the intent? Can we read uh, the energy yeah, of this uh, thing? Insight check. Yeah. Is it coming in hot? <laughs> Thirteen. Thirteen? Okay. Would anyone else like to make an insight? Uh, was that an insight? No. Oh, yes, please. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. Oh, that'll be a seventeen. Uh, no. A seventeen. No, no, no. Okay. Mm-hmm. And no from Hester. Okay. Uh, not worth um, mentioning. No. Yeah, Hester, uh, Marley, and Storm. You are squinting at it, and he does not seem aggressive. Okay. Reading his intent beyond that is a little difficult. Okay. Fairly that was kind of my main but concern. He, he doesn't look like he's attacked. No, if anything, it looked like he was maybe surveying the city, and then he saw you and is flying towards you simply out of curiosity, perhaps. That's another reason to be up on the deck and not where he has to tear open the thing to be like, who's in here? Right. <laughs> uh, I'm going to uh, sort of Raise my paw and greeting. I'm going to um, tell uh, Warminster to stand down for now. I assume as soon as the giant down. thing started. <laughs> for now. For now. Put away his gun. Lick his finger and de light the grenade fuse. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it your way. Um, and, uh, the Sphinx, uh, slowly flies towards you and kind of pulls up as it approaches you and, um, it says, Travelers. Yes? Yes. Hello. He looks over the ship. Interesting. Uh, Since the hour of revelation, we have not had travelers. The hour of revelation? Yes. Um, Wow. What's that? uh, He says, where Nicol Bolas was revealed... To be just a real shit dude. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> to where where he says where um, Nicol Bolas's plan to create a giant undead army was discovered and society fell. Um, Nicol Bolas cursed the Sphinx here for age for aeons, but finally, with his deception revealed, we are not we are no longer silent. It just feels good to talk. Um, uh, yeah. Yes, you must have. Uh, are, are you hungry or thirsty? I Would you watch the situation? Uh, no, yeah, no. He says no. Thank you. Um, but I am curious. What is your purpose here? Uh, your your name, friend Sphinx. Uh, his name is uh, Nico Bolis. <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> uh, you owned. Uh, he says his name is Nefka Hammett. Nefka Hammett? Uh, Hammett with an M. Hammett. With an N as in Nickel Bolas. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Nefka Hammett, um... It confuses me to hear that you have not had other visitors, as we understand someone's fairly recently taken up space on your planet here, um, your realm. Uh, 
Taking up residence, yes. A willing visitor, they are not. Oh. Are we talking about a spider monster named Crazen? The same, yes. Yeah. Not Jesus. willing. No, I saw his ship crash not two months ago. No. And? Or after. Oh, hilarious. Maybe we can just leave. Um... Mm. Uh, sorry, what was your. Bears. Go ahead, Storm. I was. This bears investigation, I think. What, uh, can you take us there? Uh, uh, he nods, and then Marley, what were you going to say? Um, was the crash before or after the um, Hour of Reckoning? Uh, he says after. I don't know. This might change my whole disposition. If he's stuck here... And he has the influence, obviously, to keep throwing money around at us. Though it still doesn't solve our problem. No, we need to we need to handle this. Okay, um, one way or the other. But... Quick, quick question: um, What is a nickel bolus? And also, um, is he they still here? Um, nickel bolus is an elder dragon. Color, um, kind of a, a reddish gold. Just um, throwing the N word around, the D word. Sorry, Nico Bolas, dragon. Uh, <laughs> um, and Nefka Hammett says he is not still here. He was driven away, um, defeated okay. by. Travelers not unlike yourselves. Mm. Oh, that's good, I and guess. Remember, dear, the dragons here were more beasts, weren't they? Yeah, was he a dragon, like, from here? He look... Uh, no, no, he says, no, one of the... One of the five elder dragons uh, said to craft the sphere in some legends. Uh, not yeah. from this planet. Is was thought by the people to be the creator and savior god of it and he'll gesture at some of the um the fallen like statues and statuary and they're all they all look like giant horns mm. uh and he says his symbol fallen as it should be and so the dragon from my dream didn't have those big old horns you only saw the dragon's leg oh so it could have would reddish gold be accurate? It it would not be inaccurate. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh, he might be in the right spot then. Do not do not want to fight Nicobolus, guys. Why not? <laughs> huh? Let's see. Um, considering uh, his uh, history, it's only like a CR thirty or something. I don't think there are stats for him anywhere. But well, and if I'm presuming that he is the black mannered dragon lord or whatever undead army raven queen artifact it doesn't not track um but was driven away so yeah, so he's not here anymore that's tomorrow's oh, no, problem at least no. he's, he's just a you know or a different episodes problem nefka hemet could um yes could you direct us towards uh, this crashed ship or uh, Mm -hmm. Does Cra has Crazen himself um, raised any sort of army or force? Uh, he says uh, he gestures at the um, the destroyed site that Marley saw and says uh, the Niyogi's death spider has crashed there. Um, unfortunately, he has enslaved much of the remaining population of the city, which is called. Noctam, Nocta, Noctamun. Hmm. So you see, there's a reason for us being here to liberate those people. We accomplish yes. our task, and that will be the end result, at least here. 
I must urge everyone before we get into character and the ruse should continue, but be very careful attacking anyone who isn't the Niyogi themselves. They they can pulse others against their will. Anyone we would attack would be likely an innocent. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, uh, unless Nefka Hemet, you can tell us that there was a city full of just terribly evil people or something. No. Um, yeah. He says, uh, the Sphinx have a complicated relationship with the people of Amonkhet. Um we felt they abandoned us when we needed the most when we were cursed, but we hold no ill will. There's just not many of us left to deal with this Neogi problem. They've enslaved many people, and we do not wish to harm those people. They are not bad people. The Neogi are, but yes. not the people. Um, broken, disheartened, but not bad. Can you help us? Um, if it comes down to it. Yeah, he says... This is alignment. Um, he says, if it comes down to it, I would help. I feel pity for them. Well, just think, if you feel that they've abandoned you, if they see you participating in their liberation, it might renew uh, their relationship. Positive. I... I... My experience with Sphinxes is limited, but my only experience is that you are mostly truthful creatures. Um, if sometimes... The truth is occulted behind clever speech, but uh, so I should like to be truthful with you that we intend a ruse down there um, and not to believe anything that is said or done in service of this ruse. We intend to gain entry to the central circle of this Neogi uh, where we can hopefully disrupt them directly and maybe then break this hold uh, while har- harming the least amount of innocence. Um, if that should go knickers up, uh, we'd love to be able to call on you. Uh, yeah, yeah, he'll, he'll nod. Do you have any other Sphinx friends who might be able to, uh, serve as cavalry? Uh, yes, I think he just said there's not a lot of them left. Yeah, well, but he didn't say there was none of them left. <laughs> Um, he says, uh, in the area, he is the only one. Okay. Thank you for agreeing to help. Um, I think it will be in your best interest. Uh, woman's just slash DM. Are, do the Gadabats have limited charge? Um, he says the main, the main thing you have to worry about is, uh, in wild space is running out of air. Okay. Um, but down here, as long as they're not damaged, they can fly fairly, fairly long distances. You would, okay. for this mission, you would almost certainly not run into problems. Okay. What is their fly speed? Uh, 30 feet. Okay. Okay. So not terribly fast, but. And can we dash with them if we yes. put yes. dedicated effort to it? Okay. Um, would Nefkehemet be. Uh, terribly put out to fly us down to the surface. No, and then kind of save them as a surprise to be like, we out if we need it. Yeah, he can do that. Okay. And so these little fly devices, we can secrete about our persons until we need Yeah, when, when, they're, yeah, when they're unactivated, they're, you know, like that big, so they can totally fit in like a pouch. Great. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's okay. do that. Um... And we are bounty hunters who have apprehended Alvar. Yes. And we're bringing him in to present. Yes. And claim the reward. And we'll bag Knifey to the edge of town. And when any enslaved 
citizenry attempt to come out to see us, we will unveil. You'll have polymorphed and unveil. And that should be enough time to get to crazy. Yeah, I'll cast it at the minute someone needs to see him. I mean, I don't think we need to unveil until we get to the core, even. We can Depends on say... how aggro they are coming right. at us. Well, if yes. they're mind controlled, they may not matter one way or the other to them. Okay, and also, sure. this hat is like fucking burlap. I'm not doing that. Uh, Storm, <laughs> give me your hat, and that way you also have it when. Sure, here. Pick this up. Yes, okay. Yeah. Yes, it's jumped here anyway. I'll be investing in one of those disguise hats anyway. Yeah. Um, People don't always like cats, so yes, might oh, come in handy. Um, don't know what to do with the ear slots. Okay. Um, hmm? Yeah, it's, it's good. Work as ventilation, so you don't get too hot. Yes, it is. It does work, and yeah. it's keeping the sun off me right now. Right. All right. The feather's probably hitting you in the ankles, though, as you're walking. Uh, it is easy to get lost in, but it only, <laughs> only plays up the character. Ah. Right, right. It's, it's like squinting one eye and you're not sure off why. The outside of the rim. Ah. Um, Do you cut a lemon wrong? Like, what's wrong with your eye? <laughs> <laughs> I don't love to talk about lemons. Um, all right, so... Live on the scurvy, I do. <laughs> uh... Stump on the deck to make sure Alvar heard all that and start taking trips down to the surface. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, so the three of you and Knifey. Uh, yes. Okay. I figure we keep Warminster in reserve if we need someone to come in guns blazing. Yeah, and he, he tests the, the sending stone and it seems to be working. <laughs> Do we need different uh, setup names or are we still Secret Elf? <laughs> Secret Elf... <laughs> Uh, Little Crumpet, Captain. Little Crumpet, and Man Cat, and Man Cat, Man Cat, uh, Man Cat, right. and we're gonna need new, new code names for the new crew members. Yes, Ooh, we no uh, longer have Doctor Human. <laughs> Doctor, no, the yeah. only human on the crew. Yeah, Large and in charge is is uh, Warminster. Warminster. Uh, Scruffy Gnome was Alvar. Sick Bear yes. was. Bubbles. Knifey yeah. was knifey. Knifey was knifey, yes. Because he insisted. Because he insisted. Um, oh, and Frosty Achilles was Chili Boy when you fired him. Okay. And Ariel was Doom and Gloom. Yeah, Ariel was Doom yes, and Gloom. Yes, Ariel was Doom and Gloom. Okay. Oh, and you also all need a new uh, ship name as well. But um, we can Well, let's survive our first adventure yeah, first. Let's, let's go through <laughs> this first. So, so the Sphinx takes you down to the city and uh, he looks about and he says um, I will provide aerial support yes uh, and he um, lands you all down and then he takes a couple steps forward and flies off um, into the distance so you all are in a dark part of the city um, and as I said a lot of the buildings around you are ruined but some have been like like almost rudimentally built back up um like they don't have the proper resources to doing it so it's it's very fallout uh they're building buildings out of old other buildings mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so it's very cobbled together um and even just standing where you are you can see a couple a couple people um poking around uh, they kind of seem to be just yeah doing basic repairs. No one's really seemed to pay you any mind yet. Now, are they all stiff-backed servants, or do they seem to be otherwise themselves until activated, so to speak? If I can make some kind of observation of it. Uh, so, so they are they are basically acting under their own. Yeah, they're not like stiff back robots or anything like that. They just look like people, but okay. they 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 are certainly enslaved. Yes. Mm. So to be more an invasion of the body snatchers moment where they all turn as one or something. Um, <laughs> okay. So, and is there an obvious sort of central place? Uh, yeah. So if you so for so from the air, it looked like yeah. If you go through a couple of these buildings, there was. Um, a centralized, uh, built-up, fortified area. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to use message cantrip to Knifey and just say, 
because uh, he's got this like hooded justice kind of hood on, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, so he can see out of it. Uh, just to say, uh, so Knifey, we're just going to keep this hood on you, and uh, remember, you're going to be the captain. So you don't need to say anything, but just think that you know you're the captain. We're bringing you in, and uh, I'm going to make you look like him. So. Right, and I will hold on to Knifey's knife. So I look like a protector with your life. <laughs> of course I will. Of course I will. Oh, shut up, you wink. All right. And I'm again, I have Cypress summoned <laughs> nearby. I'm going to stand in the back and try and put on the meanest scowl I can. You're pretty tall, right? Me? You're Marley, mm-hmm. right? I believe I have her at 5'6". Oh. Mm, that's about storm size, too. Well, we have, we're with two shorties, so it, we're going to look really, <laughs> by contrast... <laughs> yeah. With false perspective, it's going to look very impressive. Right. Yeah, I have her at 5'5". Five five. There yeah, you go. Okay. Uh, can I get... What's everyone's passive perception? Let me ask that. Uh, <clears throat> 14. I can't help but look at that. Um, yes, it's 10. I've got, I've got okay. nothing. Um, my passive perception is 23. <laughs> what? Because I took the observant piece. Okay, there Observe. we go. Okay, there. That makes yep. sense. <laughs> so I get plus five to passive perception. Um, okay. So, Marley, you can hear, uh, you can hear and see there are a couple people staring at you. Uh, they look like humans. Uh, and one of them starts whispering to the other... Uh, say, looking at Storm and saying, has Oketra returned? And the other one says, no, you idiot. Oketra was a god. She was 60 feet tall. Okay. Um, so I'm going to kind of try and get up to Storm and whisper to him. Does the name Oketra mean anything to you? Uh, dirty twenty. Hey, nothing. Nothing straight rings a bell. Okay. Uh. Okay. Um. I what, think, why? Why do you ask? I think some people might think that you're a god that was gone and has returned. But they're supposed to be like sixty feet tall. So maybe, uh-huh. maybe you can like use that in the future. I'm gonna puff my fur up a little bit so I look a little taller. <laughs> Give a little, sort of put some swagger on. <clears throat> yeah. No one's thought to approach us uh, with a bagged. Hominid going down the street. Uh, no, sadly, no. Everyone, it, the general feel you are getting is everyone keeps their head down. They mind their own business. Okay. And if Crazen, okay. stupid name by the way, if Crazen has <laughs> is borrowing anyone's senses, they don't have no need to activate yet. All right. Right. Uh, continue to head towards the central okay. piazza. Um, yeah. As you do. Um. You, 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 you have seen, so there's a couple, in all of your opinions, different, weird, not weird, um, unusual races you have seen. Um, so you all might be familiar with Aarakocra, but there Mm. are instead people who look more like ibises or hawks Mm. instead of more traditional, like, uh, birds or owls. Mm-hmm. Um, there's that. There's um some jackal people. Mm. Um, and people you would say are superficially reminiscent of minotaurs, but instead of a bull head, they have uh, rams heads. 
Uh, and then uh, full on snake people. Like they've got the tail of a snake, arms, but but they they don't have legs. They just have a tail. But you know, big hooded vipers, cobras kind of thing, and they're occasionally slithering by, staring at you. Okay, just keeping the uh, you know. I'm gonna start humming a little uh, sort of tune, a counter charm, basically. But I'm gonna have it have a little sort of a more of a militaristic tune, okay. so we present as like tough, a tough squad. So as Hopefully. you start, as you were walking towards the 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 interior fortifications, pardon me. Um. Uh, two of the ram-headed minotaurs step forward and cross their arms, and uh, uh, one of them goes, what? Uh, say we have a bounty for your master. <laughs> That's what. Um... Our master has many bounties active. Which one is it? Uh, this is uh, Captain Alvar in the flesh. <laughs> so, something wrong with your friend? Nothing wrong. Um, this is when this is when things are right. When things are like this. Kind of for you, at least. Keeping one eye on Hester, and uh, the 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 Minotaur says, uh, "Let me see him." You want to see him? Yeah. You want to see him? Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm the guard, making sure you're not wasting yeah, the you're boss's the guard time. Yeah, you're the guard. Gonna what? You're gonna you're gonna take him and try and collect this on your own? No. You bring him to you don't need to see him he needs to see him not you uh <laughs> give me an intimidation check with advantage Fuck. Oh. Uh... <laughs> <clears throat> well what was it storm 13 13 okay he he looks at you for a minute and then he says okay okay geez yeah I'll I'll um I'll talk to the major demo yeah I, I'm probably like my fur's all puffed up mm -hmm. yeah you you do it I'm doing it <laughs> cool Uh, and, uh, he walks off and, um, comes back a couple minutes later with, uh, one of the, the snake people slithering towards you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I don't think you're the person we need to see yet. Why don't you take us to your boss? I will be taking you to the most honorable crazen. Follow me. Following. <laughs> she starts to slither away. Mm -hmm. um, and yet you enter into, um, for what you have seen, a fairly put together looking area. Uh, and in the background, you can see the smoking hull of a spell jammer. Still smoking. It's still smoking. It looks like maybe... They're trying to get some of the slaves to repair it, and it's not going very well. Mm. So, can I use some of my otherwise unspent um, intelligence right now to uh, count uh, people between us and the boss? Sure. Uh, one second. <laughs> Obviously, there's two 
Anyway. Ram men by the door. Yeah, two ram men by, by the door. That's what the ship looks like. Ugh. Cool. <laughs> uh, two ram men by the door. Uh, you're seeing a number of umber hulks. Ugh. Um, You see three umber hulks. The two ram men. The naga. Uh, and you can see it looks like um, uh, two of the uh, ibis-headed uh, bird people are kind of flying above the Neogi and um, a pair of the jackal people are uh, currently repairing it. Okay. Um, and the Naga slithers forward and says, Most honorable Crazen." Your hated enemy, Alvar, is here. (laughs) Um, And, uh... I cast Polymorph on Knifey. Okay. Um... I don't know if I've shown a picture of Neogi on stream yet. That's what Neogi looks like. Yeah. So pretty. Yeah. And they're so fairly pretty. small. Like like shockingly small. Um Like I thought you'd be taller small. Yeah, like they're like the size of essentially like a golden retriever. <laughs> oh. Hey there, but less friendly. Oh, much less friendly. They're like yes. weird spider eels and they're all furry. Yeah. And they have a they they wear very bright clothing. Um Uh and um a from like a haze of you know like hookah smoke uh one of the neogi sticks their long eel head out and they say who brings alvar uh i am um... The legendary Storm of Stars. Legendary? Did we hire a Storm of S- Storm of Stars? Don't recall. Um, looking out, squints at you and says, "How did you get here? Do you have a ship?" Hmm. I don't believe I'm here to answer questions. I believe I'm here to collect a bounty. <laughs> uh, make a wisdom saving throw, Storm. Shit. <clears throat> uh, 19. Okay. It attempts to make eye contact with you, and uh, you uh, fight off its mental attack, and it says... Do you have any sense of what it was trying to do? It was trying to control your mind. It was trying to enslave you. Oh. Um. Them's fighting thoughts. Yeah, he says, <laughs> Well, if you want your money, you'll answer my simple question. Did you come here on a ship? Uh, he, I'm going to ask him to make a wisdom saving throw. Ooh. I'm going to suggest that he um, bow down before me. Okay. Uh, Spell save DC is 17. Okay, well. uh, He bows before you. And the other Neogi says... Crazen, you embarrass us all. Um. <laughs> uh, so he's bowing at my feet? Yeah. Can I attack him? Uh, Are we that close? Uh, that, that depends on how close you want it to be. I was picturing more like 30 feet away, but... 
You were what? I I was picturing you were more like thirty feet away, like you were negotiating like across the room. Feet away. Um, uh, let me just. I'm gonna use an action to consult with Hester. Okay. Uh, what now? Well, still a fairly large amount of innocence. Yes. I'd say. We continue the bluff that if we want something done right, don't contact amateurs like Buggis and Forlog. Right. Can we maybe go Pass this to a office. second location? <laughs> oh, yes? Marley's suggesting we see if we can't get access to a second location. Oh, for the trade off? Yes. Well, I'm making this guy bow, and I don't think he's going to be too friendly. I'm thinking we should just make this happen. I mean, I don't know. He's <laughs> he's in my control right now, but I'm going to have to drop that the minute I need to unmask Knifey. Well, I think the second he's done what you've asked, he's going to get up pretty pissed. Right, exactly. So... Uh... Step away a bit. All right, so there's two Neogi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where are they in relation to us as far as space? So, so dude who's bowing is within range of my spell. Yeah, he's like, he's like, what is it? Yeah, maybe like 20 feet from you. He took a couple steps forward. I ha he has to be within 30. So, okay. yeah, that's cool. And the other one's uh, kind of still up on his little like chase lounge, uh, smoking uh -huh. a hookah, and he's like 30 feet from you. Okay. And I'm picturing them just to top like some broken steps in some old Capitol building or something. Pretty much, is that yeah. Too far off. Right. Okay. And the other, the the Naga is between, or, or sort of, is he off the Naga is like yeah, like, like behind you and has like not stopped bowing since the Yogi started talking. Fib Bortuna back there. Yeah. Great. <clears throat> All right. Uh, I say, Marley. What was the name of that god? Okatra. Okatra? Oketra. Oketra. I say loudly, I say, we are here in the name of Oketra to liberate these people. What? Oh, shit. All right, the jig is up. Uh, the Niyogi <laughs> says, how dare you? And points at the so Naga and says, release the dragon. Oh, shit. Uh, and that's where we will end the episode tonight. <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> Stormathin, Starmathin. Stormathin, Q stars. Well, you know. No, no, it's one way to end uh, a season or a. Right. Oh, yeah. An episode of the uh, Outros and plugs. Timothy. Uh, I'm. <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Timothy. Uh, still suspended on Twitter for booing at the uh, failed meat salesman in the White House. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see if that comes around. Uh, I'd like to just plug a post credit scene where uh, all the interns are sort of on the ship waiting to like hear. And they're all trying on like new red shirts, maybe. Um, <laughs> just a thought. Uh, I'm sure it's going very well. Yeah, I'm sure, right. <laughs> um, yeah, they pretty tough. That's it. Awesome. Uh, Cece. Uh, hi, I'm Cece, a.k.a. Soup, a.k.a. Soupska, on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, follow me if you like artwork, particularly the character artwork on this very overlay that you see before you. Um, I just posted a picture of Viliana um, today um, in preparation for this episode. So, yeah. I also want to plug us. Because we're great. We are great. It was super a lot of fun meeting y'all in person. Uh, and Marty. Uh, yes, I very much uh, would like to echo that uh, comment from Cece there. We just met all at Bucks Unplugged. Uh, many of us for the first time face to face and in person and such. And it was wonderful, as well as getting to see such luminaries as It's Ramrod Dude and. Uh, uh, I always forget Shauna's 
flying circus. Yeah, I never know how to pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, flying Sirius or whatever. Yes. Um, but yes, and, and and others. It was a delightful weekend made uh, all the richer for you all. And um, yeah, let's hear it for... Let's see what the faffing about roleplay crew can do about fighting a dragon, apparently. Which I'm sure <laughs> Hester will have zero chill about. What?! <laughs> I thought you all were pranking me. They you don't like exist. choose to disbelieve or something, right? It's an epic static. Uh, if we use Pratchett rules, that means they stop to exist. Oh well, I mean that's essentially what happened to all the gods here. So, <laughs> um, that's so Hesto. Uh, I'm Andy Hatton at Andy Hatton. Follow us on Twitter at Laugh Inn Dragon. Uh, this is the last episode of 2019, so join us again in 2020 for lots of awesome new stuff. Um, season 2 of Phantom Horizons, uh, more Star Chasers, they'll have to fight a dragon next time apparently. Uh, Task Force Unlikely are still in Hades. Um, it's, we're at a bunch of, uh, the Twilight Trails crew uh, tried to blow up a some frog playing flute monster and it didn't blow up <laughs> um, oh no so well it did blow up and then it, it didn't. just <laughs> it did blow up yes it just um, um seemed to then it itself. Up itself. yeah so <laughs> lots of awesome stuff coming from uh us here at the laughing dragon inn and i hope you will continue to join us won't you Plus some big plans. There's some yeah. We got, I got some stuff. Some good ideas floating. Got some in back stuff yet. in the works mm-hmm. um, that hopefully I'll be able to announce soon. Um, but keep following these spaces, all the spaces you've known, you've come to know and love from us. And yeah, I just I hope everyone is having as fun as much fun as I am, and um, also have a great and safe and bright holiday season. Yay. Happy New Year. Are you not entertained? <laughs> <laughs>